Hey, I'm Russ. And I'm Steve. Growing up in the 80s, we were introduced to video games, movies, and technology that made a lasting impression on us and forever enriched our lives. I think I'm gonna cry! It's been a fascinating journey to be a part of, one that we constantly treasure. Higher! <laughs> booty! Our goal is simple. Share our magical moments of discovery and geek out with lovely folks, just like you. Uh, achievement unlocked. So if you crave pixel goodness, memorable moments, and experiences that make your inner child do the happy dance, you've come to the right place. Let's do this! Welcome to Joygasm. Ah, <laughs> yeah! Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first podcast episode of Joygasm. What's happening? I'm Russ, Xbox Live Toaster 360. And I'm Steve, Xbox Live Steve Avich. And that's with a V, not a B. That's right. It is good to have this, Steve Avich. It is good. It brings back good memories of when we were in Russia. <laughs> and I must, uh, I must tell you, uh, that uh, you made the name. I did. You, you made the name in its feet. And I've used this name. I've used it for all this time. And it was fitting to put it as, as Xbox. Partly a reason why, too, is because I got bored of trying to find an actual... Like original name, yeah. like this one worked, that one worked. I'm like, you know what? I know what's not going to be taken. I'm just going to put this in there. Sure enough, done. I'm like, yeah, now I can Xbox Live. Agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was good. I remember like when we were just messing around on the couch and like we were just coming up with different names, and you lovingly bestowed the name of Rasipus onto right. me, and uh, I what? called you Steve Avich. which sounds better than it reads. Because if you read it, you're like, huh, Rusty. Poos. Like, no, 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 no. You, you gotta say it Russian style. Russi poos. Yeah. It rolls off the tongue a little bit more naturally when you see it like this. But, uh, yeah, we are uh, kicking off our podcast. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is the very first episode. So I, uh, for one, am very excited. I assume you are excited as well, Steve. I'm I'm more excited than I look right now. Oh, not, not that anybody can tell, and that that's why I just kicked you. Oh, I I, I like being kicked by you. It uh, that was an accident. That little piggy stayed home. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think the probably the best thing to do is to kind of let everybody know kind of a little bit of a backstory with us as it entails gaming. Right. So we've been gaming. For pretty much our whole lives, I gotta say. Yeah, uh, since back in the eighties. Yeah, just like the uh, title of the show says. Just like uh, how very astute yeah. of you. Uh, it, it's it's almost like we meant for it to be it, that exactly. way. Exactly, we said it enough times. It's fresh in my mind. Sega yeah. Master System. Sega. Well, actually, it goes even before that, because we. Well, actually, I don't. Oh know if, no no yeah you're right. It goes back to, um, and I'm not going to say the name of the yogurt shop, but it was a frozen yo- yo- yogurt shop, Rohnert Park, California. Mm-hmm. Frozen yogurt shop. Frozen yeah. yogurt shop. Yep. And um, with Pac-Man. That's right. Because there was one of those tabletop arcades. It, wasn't, it didn't stand up. You could eat on the thing and play games at the same time. And a little Pac-Man was running around doing his little Pac-Man thing. And well, actually, we have to we have to preface that with the, with the whole point that our dad would take us there on the weekends. It was kind right. of like a, what we call boys day. Right. And so we would go to this frozen yogurt shop. He'd get us a little small frozen yogurt. And um, you and I would always be drawn to those tabletop arcades. We'd sit right. down and we'd just look at them. But we were so young at that point in time, we didn't understand how they worked. We just kind of would move the joysticks around and press right. the buttons and whatnot. And, right. And our dad thought he was just like so clever that he didn't have to you know put a quarter in to, to operate the machine and uh uh did you want to continue telling the story or, sh- or should i should i keep going um you keep going okay i'll, okay. I'll chime in okay 
Okay. So I'm re envisioning <clears throat> this as, as as it's happening. So I, you continue. Uh, thank you. Um, I think we were probably. I think I was five and you were three, somewhere around there, uh, or maybe four and six. No, I think it was. Uh, it was. Not, it was around that time, but I think I was a little bit older because this was Runner Park, and if I was four, we were living in Petaluma. Yeah. Well, yeah, we were living in Petaluma when that we happened. We wouldn't, but we wouldn't. We we were. Yeah. No. Oh yeah. Oh, this is this yeah. way back. Yeah. So, um, what ended up happening was there was one fateful day where you know, as usual, we walk in. We're having Boys' Day. Our dad gets us each a frozen yogurt. And we sit down and we're just, and, and the, the tabletop that we happened to sit at was Pac-Man. And there was some stranger guy that was in there. You know, typically people are stranger danger. Well, not in this case, people. Well, not this, in this case. This was back to when people were a lot more nice, social, interactive. Like, oh, these little kids want to play the game. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, it's cost me a quarter. You know, I yeah. make this kid's day. So, so if I were to put on my storytelling voice at this point, it's a big deal. Because this moment is life altering for the two of us. Mm-hmm. Um, we're sitting there minding our own business, eating our ice cream. Ice cream just, you know, totally like all over our mouths and chins and everything else. We don't care. We're kids we're having a good time. And this guy comes over and he says, Oh, you guys want to play? And it was like the coolest thing because we both look up at this guy and he reaches into his pocket. And pulls out like this this shiny quarter, and it was almost like slow motion. Like we're like, what is he doing? Yeah, I don't get it. And I remember Dad being kind of he yeah, was he, he, he was still paying for he, yeah, the frozen right. yogurt. Yeah, but I remember he, that. He had his eye on us, but he had the look on it like a oh no, oh, like the, yeah. the, the big wide eyed <laughs> no 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 sort of thing. But he couldn't. He wanted to make a scene. Yeah, his eyes got so big, and it was literally one of those like movie moments where like <laughs> it's in slow motion. He's like. Mm-hmm. As the guy is like putting this down and, and we watch him take the quarter and put it through the slot and all of a sudden all the sounds came on, you know, all the Pac-Man thing came on and, and, and it said, get ready. The, bu- and then, the buttons and the levers came to life all of a sudden like, oh, just wiggling them around, didn't do anything yeah. before and now everything is in under my control. Yeah, yeah, we, um, yeah, exactly. Like before we thought that it was just something that just kind of messed around we thought we were playing the game and then all of a sudden we realized, no, this is how you play the game. I should, I need to, Interrupt for just one second. Please do. I wouldn't say interrupt. I would say interject. Interject. I, need, I have a point that is vital uh, that, that needs to be said. The reason why dad went, or, or had that look in his face, is because he was very anti-TV altogether, uh, very anti-game, and didn't want us to go down that <laughs> route. He wanted us to move paint cans for the rest of our lives, you know, be the ultimate paint can movers. He had such lofty plans for us. Right. So, th- I just need to set... That's why he had that look in his eye. Not of, oh, yeah, let's have the kids play some fun with a video game. But he didn't want that to happen. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, basically this moment from from here on out, or there on out. Love dad, by the way. Past tense. Oh, yeah. L- love him. Love your dad. Love your dad. Dad, you're the best. Awesome dad. Best, the best. Love your dad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ever since that moment, every time we'd have Boys Day and we'd go to get frozen yogurt, then um, we, would, we would just hound our dad for quarters because we realized what it was, and we played Donkey Kong and Pac-Man, and I can't even remember what other ones they had there, but that really set us on the course. And... Um, and then uh, since that happened, then we had friends who had the Atari, you know, the Intellivision and whatnot. We played Battle Tanks and Pitfall and all those. Pitfall, yeah. Um, and, uh, and then we were introduced to the Sega Master System, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, and have worked our way. So we've, we've been just blissfully playing games uh, since the 80s. And um, now we're, we're just enjoying playing on Xbox One and Sony PS4 and... Um, anything else that kind of strikes our fancy. So um, it's it's definitely really cool. But um, I, I I guess we could segue into just talking about like why we're actually even doing this podcast in the first place. And um, essentially, it's just it, it's a creative outlet for us. I think it's what's really fun about it um, is it gives us a chance to connect with other gamers 
And I think it's been kind of like this, this process of discovery really where, um, I started going to Comic-Con back in 2012. I've gone for several, several years. Just this year, I had the, uh, privilege and the honor mm-hmm. of <clears throat> introducing you, Thank you to your very first Comic-Con. Appreciate that, Russ. Here in Dallas. Very generous. <clears throat> yes. So, uh, just seeing that, it just really brought to the forefront how amazingly passionate people are about all things pop culture, whether it's games or movies or comic books or just technology in general. I mean, I, th- I think that um, it just seeing the amount of, of passion there. I mean, I, I always thought in my small little bubble of a world that I was like, oh, I'm like really hardcore and everything else uh, when it comes to these types of topics. And then I would go to, to some place like Comic-Con or, you know, we'd get in line for a movie and see people dressed up and just, you know, they people who are just really, really, really eat, drink, sleep, breathe this stuff. And uh, I just, I found myself feeling compelled to want to be able to connect with everybody in a way that uh, we could. And, and podcasting is just, I think, one of those those communication tools that allows us to do that. And so, you know, we realize that uh, with us starting the way we are, uh, we probably have nobody listening. Right. <laughs> and so we're probably, uh, you know, sitting here in my closet and talking to nobody. Mm, yeah. But eventually, it's, uh, <laughs> eventually we're going to have millions of listeners. But uh, right now, um, just an open void. Yeah, it's okay. You know, going back to what you said, though, <clears throat> one thing that I had always tossed around in my mind was... That okay, you know, back in the day, you had people who played games and who enjoyed games, but it wasn't like this avenue that you could really, and you could talk about it, but people are kind of would roll their eyes like, huh, ah, video games, like, oh, it's only for nerds, or it's only for this. And I'm thinking, man, this is art, this is imagination. You know, someone thought of of, of this entire story and how the level's gonna look and the sound effects and you know, blah blah blah, even though they're little just pixels. And I thought that's really cool, and I like talking about it, but. There wasn't an avenue really of, of uh, a, a welcomed openness of, isn't it cool to uh, look, you know, dress like that or talk like that or have an imagination or, or this avenue of being creative other than, you know, uh, making a, a watercolor painting. Like there's other digital avenues of, of art, of oh, sure. pure art. Yeah. And um, nowadays... You can talk about it, not like you couldn't before, but it's so much more open and welcome and and, and, and accepted now that you can talk about games. Oh, and, it's and huge, yeah. So, um, and video games had a big part of my imagination as a kid. Imagination mm-hmm. I still have right now, and I'm oh, yeah. I'm 36 years old. Um, so, uh, now that it's 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 gone very very mainstream, and um, and people are. are playing a lot of games and there's tons of formats to play the games and just going full speed ahead um it's it's fun to just talk about everything video games pop culture movies yeah um have a great time with it make a bunch of impersonations i mean it's fun this is gonna be fantastic yeah no i i think um you bring up some good points with that and i think that's what joygasm is all about really is just we want to be able to celebrate and geek out with uh, everybody, all all the listeners out there um, who share the same type of uh, interests and passion that we have, and and we have some fun plans for this. You know, we're the, we are certainly starting out, uh, just not really knowing what we're doing, but but we have like kind of this high level goal of of what it is that we'd like to achieve, and and uh, you know we, we're starting out with the podcast here, but we've got big plans to be able to kind of push this into a direction that would include. Uh, some some fun projects in the future here so hopefully you all will stick with us and be able to indeed enjoy and, and partake in some of the fun festivities that that is uh in the near future mm-hmm. so um yeah i i would say without further ado let's talk about some games that uh, we've been playing recently oh okay <laughs> well um 
Does I, it start with over and end with watch? Uh, yeah, two syllables. Uh, yeah, two, two, two initials. Overwatch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, love me some Overwatch. Overwatch. Uh, I can't go to bed without playing a little bit of Overwatch. Um, which is probably the worst way to go to bed is to play Overwatch. But at the same time, I, I can't not go to bed it's become part of the routine i don't know about you but it does leave me with a gumdrop smile when i hit the pillow at night it does for some z's right right um but that was a game that uh at first i didn't really want anything about because i I didn't take time to look into it and i I was always getting well slaughtered and at that point (laughs) it wasn't that fun but at the same time the game has so much so much atmosphere and so much character and so much originality uh, that it kept on bringing me back. The, the curiosity was built up, and, and I kept going back, and now I can't get rid of it. Well, and I think you had the same kind of journey that I had, which was when I first was, was introduced to this. I mean, first of all, the game is made by Blizzard, and Blizzard, everything Blizzard does oh, is gold. Yeah, I thank mean, you, Blizzard. Yeah. Good grief. I mean, it was just, it was great. Uh, we've, we've played Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo. I mean, we've, we've been... Uh, uh, and just enjoying all yeah. the games. So when Overwatch came out, it was interesting because you and I in the past have been huge Halo players. Right. You know, you and I played it to, to, to oh my death. Gosh. I mean, there's not no, any nook and cranny that's not explored. Yeah. We know all the lines in the game. Yeah. Uh, and so, but that was one of the things that I discovered was the fact that the gameplay mechanics of Overwatch is very different it's 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 sharply different than that of halo halo you could you know you had a certain need to play like if you played like um like a team-based round you right. know you you weren't playing slayer you were playing like team slayer right um you know you, you there, there were times where you, where you could play together as a team and group up and, and kind of have that wolf pack mentality or you could go off and strike it on your own and be able to really you know wreak some havoc if you wanted to right overwatch that's not the case. Right. Overwatch. Yeah, we, good luck going on your own. Yeah, we each learned the hard way. Like, that doesn't really work. Like, all the, the tactics that we had kind of conditioned ourselves to do in Halo just really <laughs> it failed in Overwatch. Right. And, it, and it just really, the game forced you into this team-based strategy. And, it, and I got to say, like, w- once that little light switch in my head just went click and I was able to, to kind of, be open to it, I guess is a good way of saying it. Just, just embrace myself to it. Um, it's been just such a rewarding experience to play. And it's so, it is amazing. I will say when you are on a team and you like, everybody is on the same level. Yeah. You don't, you don't have people who are messing around or or doing whatever, but, but you actually like are working as this organic cohesive unit and it's just great. Um, so yeah, Overwatch has, has been a lot of fun, and you had the same kind of journey right. as I had. And now we just, uh, yeah, we just play it every night. And, Pretty much. Uh, you know, have to at least gain a level every night, well, if not two. It's okay. It's like crack. Yeah. Mm. Right. <laughs> uh, you have your adrenaline junkies, and you have your Overwatch junkies now, I guess. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it, I think it's worth mentioning that I'm glad the light bulb went off. For us and many others, because there's still quite a few where the light bulb still hasn't gone off, and you could say group up, times a hundred, and then people just kind of go off doing their own thing, and yeah, <laughs> you're like, well, where are you going? Where are you going? Like, yeah. I killed. Yeah. So, um, which that's the most annoying part. But then at the same time, the people who who the light bulb did go off, you know, you don't even have to really communicate with them through the headset mm-hmm. because they already know. Okay, you're Reinhardt. You got the shield. You're gonna be up front because I you're have to get tank. behind. Yeah, you're a tank. I yeah. have to get behind you and shoot, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Yeah, you know. But if you don't go out and I go out first, I'm gonna get killed, which means <laughs> you're gonna get killed. Um, <laughs> same thing with Mercy. Like if you don't look out for your healer, you're not gonna get healed. So if, if everyone is cohesively playing this team working polyphony of of you know activity um it's it's not going to work and you're not going to get that objective right right i'm trying to think what kind of do we have any fun moments last night while we were playing um n- yes and no last night was more of like an average night i think um average night of kicking ass <laughs> 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 but <laughs> i think lately um What's been fun is uh, uh, either you or I will become a lot more vocal 
um, and saying what we're doing, not just like, oh, you know, look out for this person, you know, Widowmaker's on this ledge over here on the left. But um, Oh, I did have a play that I just realized. Yes. We were on uh, Elios, I think it was. Elios. And, and that was when um, I was Farah and I uh, used my little... Uh, Oh, all the Blizzard fans are going to kill me, but it's it's that rocket that you shoot that like bounces people back. It's like a concussion rocket it's or something. A, like yeah, that. concussion rocket. Is that is that what yeah. the, is that what the official yeah. title? Okay, I was about if, to yell out "Justice reigns from above," and then be like, <laughs> "No, that's not what it was, Steve." I'm like, "Yeah, right. No, I'm, I'm going to be quiet." Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I remember we were doing capture the flag, and both Bastion and uh, Roadhog right. were coming over, and I was just in the this this great spot where I got to use that, knocked them both off the map, came down, took out. Junkrat and uh, almost took out Tracer, but then Tracer uh, dealt with me and killed me. So. I hate Tracer. <laughs> I hate Tracer. Oh my goodness. For those of you who don't know, which would be all of you, um, and when it comes to Capture the Flag, our go to characters, I personally really go for Farah. I, I have, it's interesting because D.Va was always like my, my favorite character to play, and I just feel like as of late that. Blizzard has really nerfed the crap out of D.Va uh, to the point where I, I'm having trouble just playing her at this point. Um, which is not to say, I mean, early on, I think she was overpowered. I think that she needed it to be toned down a bit. But I feel like they've toned her down so much that she's almost been neutered in a way that uh, <clears throat> just makes me not play her as much. But um, Pharaoh's kind of my go-to. Steve's is Torbjorn. Torbjorn. That's, that's right. <laughs> Uh, and so, yeah, it's been great because uh, Steve is quite the D man. Mm. He uh, he knows how to play some serious D. Right. Protecting that flag. Right. <clears throat> Getting his molten core on. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say that last night we, uh, what, what do you think? We won 60% of the time and lost 40% of the time? Um, yeah, nothing above 60. It would be like 50 or 60% 50 win. 50 or 60% of the time, yeah. 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 But, uh it is amazing how much time goes by when we play that game. Right. I think, okay, we're only going to play for like an hour. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, five hours later, I'm like, oh, I should probably uh, go to bed. Well, I think it's also what Blizzard's known for, like it was StarCraft and WarCraft too, is you go, oh, man, it's getting late. I mean, it's kind of late, but it's not too late. I mean, I'll just put in five more minutes. There's no more five more minutes. No. Like, you can go, that, that's the mindset of I'm just going to play one more match. Plus, your blood's pumping from either winning or losing from the last match. And so then the other match is going to take 15 to 20 minutes. And then you think, okay, yeah, I'm so full of pump. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm awake. Let's play one more. And then it's like 4 a.m. in the morning. And you're going, I got to be up in two hours. Uh, what did I just do? And um, But but then the next night you're doing the same thing all over again. So, mm -hmm. But um, good, uh, good gaming dynamics by Blizzard. What are your thoughts on uh, the Uprising? The, uh, the Uprising, I'm glad they did it. Uh -huh. Um because one thing that had bugged me about the game for the longest time is that you have this glorious beginning, Pixar level beginning with Winston talking about the story. Mm -hmm. you're, you're laughing because it's it's you know he's trying to adjust the camera and everything and get it right, and the sun's going down in the background. Um, and then all you do all you do in the whole entire game is fight each other. Like okay, the story said one thing, we're doing something else. So I I always wanted this other story. Uprising is the glimpse of what the story might be or could be. Um, and I think it's fun, but it it's not as fun as multiplayer. I'm glad it's there, and that's definitely a quick way to get experience mm -hmm. um, because you you can play it. It's probably you know, 15, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, even on normal. Um, and then you could end that part and you get an easy 3, 4, 5,000 yeah. EXP and then go back to multiplayer. Right, right. Um, so, and that way it's fun to just mow down a bunch of Onyx robots, but um, I think they need to build upon it a little bit more to expand upon that. Give us some story, um, background uh, for a lot of the characters, because they, they say all these little bits and pieces throughout the rest of the game, like, oh, you know, their sister behind uh, Reaper and Mercy, like she did something, you know, maybe messed up a medical procedure, mm -hmm. and now he is what he is. Okay, well, what what happened there? You know, or... Winston obviously has some 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 story. Tracer has a story. Everyone's got a story. Well, I think you touch on something that's that yeah that, that it's resonated with me as well in the sense that traditionally speaking, whenever we have like a first person shooter game come out, 
um, there, there's typically like a, like a single campaign part of the game, and then you have your multiplayer part of the game. And so it was, it's interesting because you, you've you've seen this shift going on within the just first person shooter games as a whole, where companies are kind of tinkering with the idea of trying to not have to deal with a single player campaign part of the game, a component, if you will. And I think that's been met with some controversy. I think that Blizzard is probably like the one company that has made their multiplayer so amazingly good, for lack of a better way of saying it, that um, people have been able to kind of forgive them and kind of forget about but what's going on with that. But having said that, I think because Blizzard has made just these fascinating characters um, that everybody loves. I mean, you go on Pinterest and you see like all these, these different fan arts of variations and interpretations of these different characters and stuff like that. Um, I think that there is a growing cry from the fans to actually have some sort of single player campaign or co-op campaign that's online, something like that, um, that helps to kind of hash out the story. I know that like um, there have been other single player games too. Like uh, like I know um, EA was was uh, doing this quite a bit, especially with Respawn Entertainment's game of um, what the heck was that game called? Titanfall. Titanfall. <clears throat> you know, Titanfall was a game that really piqued my interest, and then it came out, and I was like, "Where's the single player?" And I realized, oh, this is only right. online multiplayer. And I, so I, I only played it for a bit and, and just kind of lost interest. And I, I remember having a, a conversation with Brad about this. Our good old friend, Brad. Brad. Uh, and he was he's a big fan of, of Titanfall. And we were just kind of discussing, you know, sh- is there value with having a, a, a story slash campaign mode or not? And I... My, my side of, of the conversation was kind of using Halo as an example where it's like, look, I have built an emotional attachment to Master Chief based on his story. The very reason why you have these rabid fans about Halo is the fact that there's there's this amazing backstory that everybody loves with his relationship with Cortana and with just what's going on uh with like the earth versus the covenant versus the flood, the flood right. all that. Um, and so I think that that's why with something like Titanfall I was not able to, to stick with it. But once again, there seems to be an anomaly in the form of overwatch where <laughs> once again, it's just blizzard doing what they do. But overwatch, it's like, I'll play multiplayer. I have been, I have logged in. I checked my Xbox account. I have logged in over 250 hours into that game. I mean, just, just by comparison, like probably one of the games I put quite a bit of time in most recently is Witcher 3. And Witcher right. 3, I think, was right around 300 hours. Right. Um, so that's that's saying something, especially considering the fact that both you and I were kind of late bloomers to Overwatch. Yeah. Like we, we didn't start playing it right when it came out. We, I think, got into it what, about like four to six months after its release. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Um, so that that's pretty interesting, and I and I think it's, I think what Blizzard's doing is they're kind of tinkering with that, kind of almost doling it out one at a time. Like, oh well, here's here's Uprising, or here's you know here's another pre-rendered cinematic that kind of tells a little bit more of the story and stuff. Which, by the way, I love. I love all of those pre-rendered cinematics that they've put out. Oh with. yeah, it's just it's like you said, it's like Pixar level, right. and you're just like, oh my gosh, this is just gorgeous. But at the same time, why not incorporate that in the game? I mean, when you showed me that, it was all on on YouTube. Yeah. And I had to look at through all these cutscenes ind- independently. Like, I had missed all of that. I didn't know it even existed. And I've and I've worked in retail all my life, and I've I've lately seen the game on the shelf. Didn't really care about it. Didn't see anything on on Xbox Live with it. That could have been just me, but it wasn't showcased. If I had to watch that, it would have really piqued my interest because again, it's Pixar quality. Yeah. Um, they did a phenomenal job on it. And it wasn't until you sh- you said, oh, have you seen all these clips? They're supposed to be, and maybe they're supposed to be in the, in the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. And whenever I begin the game, it's always Winston. Again, that's a great intro, but I wanted to see more. Yeah. Um, and there is a ton more. Um, I wanted to touch on one thing, though, with, with the multiplayer uh, versus the single-player campaign uh, in games, is that um, 
in a way, I kind of think it's somewhat of a, of, of a, of a cop-out in a way because it, it does take a lot of time to develop a character and a story um, versus, you know, okay, making a bunch of just characters and having them all fight each other and having little microtransactions. That's great and all, but, it, but it's not necessarily going to give you a, a winner every single time versus a story that develops and blooms into background and character development and story and whatnot, which I think, you know, if you compare like The Witcher to maybe one of the Final Fantasies, I mean, there's a strong, there's a strong following to Witcher mm-hmm. and a lot of people talking about it, even to this day when it's been out for a couple years or yeah. so. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I want to learn more about The Witcher. I want to read the books about The Witcher. Um, granted, I'm not going to say it was a perfect game and there was my, I have some a little critiques, issues with yeah. a little critiques, but um, I, I, I'm definitely curious and I definitely want to pay more money if there was more DLC or if there was a sequel to the game um, versus some other game that was, okay, you have to find other players around the world. You have to base all your hope on the server that it's actually going to connect you. Um, you know, you're going to have to hope that the characters are all going to be on your side to complete the story and not just do their own thing and jump around and, you know, teabag somebody. It's like... I just want to play the story myself and enjoy it and then do the multiplayer. Yeah, I'm very much the same way. Like, where I can take the time to learn about the, each character, appreciate kind of what their purpose is in the story, what the purpose is of, the, of them being in the game that kind of goes beyond just the gameplay mechanic of, oh, well, this is a support unit or this is an assault unit, this is a tank unit, you know, so on and so forth. So, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um and it's been fun. I mean, like just just looking at Overwatch as we play each night. I mean, there there's an interesting um, evolution of how people are playing. You know, sometimes we'll get people who are all about defense, and other times we we'll have people who are all about offense and whatnot. And <clears throat> it's uh, I think it's going to be a game that we're going to be talking about uh, probably on a daily basis, fairly often, on a podcasty basis. Yeah. So the other game I can say that uh, is worth mentioning is um, Quantum Break. Mm. And um, it's an older game, I know. Um, I, uh, I guess I should let them know that I, uh, I became a dad about two, a little over two years ago. And so my, uh, my gaming career, if you will, uh, took a back seat because I had to be a daddy. And uh, it was uh, something that, I would, I just continued to collect the games. You know, they, they stayed in the cellophane. I would, <laughs> I was just like, okay, well at some point I'll get to them. And quantum break was one of those that I um, always wanted to eventually check out and play just because I'm, I'm a big fan of the previous work done by, um, Oh, I forgot their name. I forgot the name of the company, but they did Alan Wake and they did, um, another one. And, uh, yeah, I can't remember their name. What was their name? I don't know. Oh, I had it in my mind and it just decided to say, see ya and left. But anyway, anyway, moving right along. Uh, the cool thing about it though, is that they have always done a, a terrific job at storytelling within their games. And I just got through the first act last night. The game is really cool. Like just, just everything about it has uh, really great production values. The, uh, they, they hired, uh, real actors from uh, TV and movies and whatnot to, to play the roles. And it really does make a difference. One of the things I didn't realize actually is, is when you finish various sections of the game, like different acts, they actually have um, like a TV show, like, 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 like 20, it's literally like 24, you know, TV show 24, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very similar to that where the same actors who are, who you play with as the game character models, they actually hired these actors and have, I guess, done this whole like mini season thing through the game as kind of a reward. So when you finish an act, mm. then you sit back and you watch. I mean, it's like, I think it was like a 10 minute long section. Wow. And, um, it all of a sudden just made it that much more tangible. I don't know. I liked, I liked that approach. I thought it was really cool. All the uh, the different abilities that you have too as you're as you're playing the game. I have a concern though. I think well, there 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 are two things. One is is that the um, abilities that they have that well that you've you've kind of accumulated through. Well, you haven't played the game. Do you care if no. I? Yeah, I, no, go. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I mean, I figure the game's old enough. This is not really like anything spoiler esque, but um, there's like this time machine contraption thing that that they that they've devised, and so you you know you have a protagonist and an antagonist in it. Um, by being exposed to this this contraption that like got messed up in a certain way, um, you are imbued with these certain almost like time oriented superpowers which are super cool. I mean, like just the stuff that you can do in the game is really fun. My only concern though, and I, I've actually read about this online. Um, so it's kind of confirming what, what was uh, read already about, but um, I feel like like they give too many abilities to you up front, and I can already tell it's like, okay, well, I guess I'll just kind of rinse and repeat, like going through the different areas, different levels, that sort of thing. But what's great about it is just, I mean, the, the environment artist did a really nice job. All the different um, environments, whether they're um, interior or exterior, or whatever, very moody, very cool. Um, I think the game is probably only probably going to be like an eight to ten hour long game as a whole. Oh, Max Payne was the other game they made. See, it's slowly coming back to me. It's mm. just you know the, the brain. Max that, Payne. The old noggin is uh, a little little slower than it uh, used to be. But uh, but yeah, both Max Payne and uh, Alan Wake were were uh, the games that they did. And I'm still. I was uh, I was late to Max Payne. I enjoyed Max Payne, but I was late to the game on that one. Max Payne. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's definitely a good one. Um, I'm actually going to. I feel really bad that I cannot remember the name of the developer that made Alan Wake. Remedy Entertainment. Remedy. I'm oh yeah. So sorry. Remedy Entertainment. Yo, no, they did Max Payne. They did the uh, Alan Wake, and now uh, Quantum Break. And so, yeah, we'll have to see what happens if if it's if the game continues to be as good as it's been so far. I mean, I, I would love to see a sequel of it be made. So I'll be continuing to play that. Yeah. Into the sunset. Right. So. Anywho, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what we've been playing uh, up to this point. Yeah, I, I do have to mention, um, I can't let this go. Oh. Is that uh, on a daily basis, uh, I have been playing um, Clash of Clans. Oh, you and, and your Clash, Clash of Clans. Clash Royale. Oh. oh, my goodness. I've been playing Clash of Clans for the last, <laughs> I mean, three or four years. And, um, and Clash Royale is, a, is a, I have to check in every three hours just to see, uh, you know, if my loot box is, uh, opened or, um, I have to fight to get another one, but I'm, I must say, don't you have like separate phones? Like, you yeah, have, no, no, you, you have, I a, do. He has a phone I do. dedicated to this freaking game. I do. I, I have a phone. Actually, no, I have, a, I have, I had four phones. I had four. <laughs> Um, and for those listening, I only have one, right? And three of them are just dedicated to the game. Um, and now I'm, I'm dwindled down to, wait, wait, you had three phones I had, dedicated I had, to the game. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. What? I, yes, I did. Yes, I did. This is, I, this seriously, I have, this is the first time I've heard this. Mostly for Clash Royale, but, um, I, you know, I wanted to, I, I would make a card deck to use in the game that I really wanted to keep, or I would make three per phone. And I didn't want to like forget about, uh, the, a winning deck that I had at the same time I could, I could do different things. I could donate more, uh, for the clan and whatnot. Um, but then uh, this is gonna make me sound terrible, but I'm being real. <laughs> gotta keep it real. I gotta keep it real. So <laughs> I had a losing streak and one of my phones, I actually broke because broke? I, I broke. Yeah. I, I was like, ah, and I squeezed the phone and I broke it. You broke yeah, I, that sounds like a yeah. little personal issue, there, I, Steve. No, it's not a. Pro I'm a very peaceful person. You're a very peaceful I, man. I am. I I must say I'm very peaceful, but um, and I haven't done it since. But uh, yeah, he's very peaceful, very yeah. strong <laughs> man. <laughs> I broke the phone. Stress um, test. So anyhow, how many uh, phones have you broken? Uh, well, let's see. I had okay. You had so, a Hulk moment, didn't you? I did have a Hulk moment. I should have done that. I went Hulk <laughs> Pow. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I had the first phone kind of died on me. I think I dropped it. It was an HTC M8, uh, and that was the first to go, but that was okay because I had the M9 ready to go. Um, and then I had an LG G3, and that was the one that, that I kind of pulverized. <laughs> okay, though, because I had the G4. Um, my iPhone I've been taking very, very special care of. Um, I do have a Note five actually that's back in california i have not set that one up yet so that one's gonna be reserve 
Uh, hopefully, I don't want to have to wait, use wait. it. You have another phone that's in the I, box? Yeah, yeah, I have a Note 5. Um, I was going to let Dad use it, but, you know, Dad, uh, enough said. Um, well, he but already the, has a phone anyway. I, I know, and he has to learn the whole Android system, and he's probably he's never going he's, to. Yeah, he. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but he definitely wanted to check it out. So I thought, you know what? I have my iPhone. Um, actually, I have a 5s and a 6s, but um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> we understand you have every phone known to man that um, you have. This is this this is. Uh... Well, let me just say. <laughs> I, I did have a I did have a job selling phones for a long time, and a lot of these are like old used up demos that the company was like, okay, toss them out, nearly out of inventory, and and being um, the man that you are, I you tossed them out and recovered them out of the trash. There you go. So so Clash of Clans and Clash or what, what's the other one? Something Royale. C- Clash Royale. Cla- now are they okay? I I have never played. Let me these educate games. you, Russ. Okay. Okay, and I know at some point you're gonna play this. Believe me. Okay, so they're both made by Supercell. The same thing. The same company makes them. Supercell. Okay. Supercell. Clash of Clans came out first. And you have Supercell. Supercell. Yes. Um, and you have a ton of characters to choose from. They all look different as you level them up. They all have different little voices and whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Clash of Clans is a takeoff. Clash of... Good grief. I'm confusing myself already. <laughs> Clash Royale is... He's a, very excited. It, I am. As a takeoff from... Clash of Clans. So there's a lot of similar characters in it with a lot of the animation and flair of the Clash of Clans. The difference is that instead of making a base as you would in uh, clans yeah. and then fighting somebody else's this, base... Is, this, is it classified as tower defense or what? what's the game um, style? You know... Uh, what's the genre? I, I I don't know what the genre is. Well, Rush. but... Because you, you're you're making you're, what you're making your own kingdoms, but you have to defend the kingdoms. You have to defend the kingdoms. You have a shield that'll last, you know, 15 hours or so. Um, and yeah, I can look it up and see exactly what it's classified as. But as anybody who's listening is probably going to know what Clash of Clans <laughs> is. Um, I swear, as he's looking for this thing, like there are times when I'm playing a game and he's sitting next to me on the couch, and I hear these like random little horn, like like French horn noises or something. And, and at first, I'm like, what the heck is that? And I now know it's this is Clash of Clans that he just plays. I mean, I he he is dedicated to that game. Well, the app store doesn't say what kind of genre it is, but that's okay. And, I just figured I'd ask off. Anyway, so off the cuff, right? So and Clash Royale, um, you're not you, you don't make a base, you don't attack somebody's base. You literally make um, a, a card deck basically. Yeah, and it's not necessarily a card game, but it's these characters that you have three towers, your main kingdom tower and two defense towers. And you have these little bridges on either side. You have to cross and all these cards do different stuff. Like they've really hashed it out. Yeah. And you basically got to take down their towers. You get three stars. You basically need one star for first tower, one star for the second tower, the third star for the third tower. Or you can just concentrate all on the, the kingdom tower, which is a lot more hit points. And if you take that out, you get an instant three star. But you're playing against an actual live person. Mm-hmm. And so their card deck, you can't see. How many is, players are in like a match or a game? Oh, it's just one versus one. That's it? That's I, one versus one. I thought that match. you were part of like some clan overall. I, I am, and I am, then like there's like bun- like multiple players that. Yeah, it, it's it's one versus one. I am part of a clan. So if you say, I want to upgrade this card, you can say, okay, I want barbarians. Okay. And then the rest of the clan can donate their barbarian cards to you so you can level up faster. So there is a sense of community. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, but in the game, it's one versus one. That being said, what they've done lately is they've had like this weekend event where it's two on two. So like either if I'm with you... And you and we're on the same clan, and we have our phones. We can we can do two v two, and you can tell we can kind of strategize back and forth about what card to play. What you know, if you're gonna put a giant down, okay, I'm gonna put a minion horde behind you. You know, oftentimes though, that's not the case. So I could be playing with somebody. I'm in Texas right now. I could be playing with my clan back in California, mm-hmm. and we don't know what we're gonna put down. I mean, so it's like on the spot. Okay, I'm gonna throw a giant down. I'm gonna do this, that, and the other. And sometimes it's a little bit of a k, you know, a cluster. <laughs> Other times, um, not it, to be confused with a custard. 
Okay. So, <laughs> so oftentimes it's a cluster and everyone's mocking, you know, everybody else because there's little emotes that you can do. Oh, that's and, cool. And it's, it's funny and it's fun and it takes up. I mean, it, it's also a very addicting game. I've never put more than five bucks into it. So what, what, oh, so, so you, you have grinded like right. over all these Correct. years. You have, okay. Yes. That is impressive. Cause right. I don't know if I'd have the patience for that. I'd probably right. just slop. Slop. Right. Yeah, I'd slop it down, yeah. slap it down, whatever. <laughs> yeah, here's some cash. Um, yeah, you can buy gems and upgrade quicker or or buy certain stuff. I'm I mean, I have other stuff I want to do in my life right now, so and I have had stuff I had to do in my life, so I thought, you know, I'd I might put some money down on it. But I mean And you've been I, playing this for four years? Um, not Royale. Clash, so of, Clash Clans, of Clans, I have, yeah. And you've only ever spent, like, and the $5 yeah. was, like, when you bought the game? Or is no. it free to play? It's free to play. It's free to play. Okay. Um, I think they were, they did this donation, this the uh, red, and I forgot, I think it was, it was, um, ah, I forgot what the, what the research was for. It was something like for AIDS research or something like that. So oh. I thought, okay, they'll give you some other little uh, graph, graphic upgrades if mm-hmm. you for a time being if you donate. So I thought, okay, five bucks, you know, why not? Yeah, sure. So that was the only the five bucks I put down. So what is it that is addicting for you that's kept you so loyal over these years? Because that's, I mean, that's almost like Halo level, which, I mean, Halo's kind of like the the pinnacle of games that we've played that we just were extremely loyal to and we just can't get enough of. Oftentimes, it's it's the camaraderie. It's, It's, again, the teamwork. Because when I first got the game, I didn't have a clan, and actually, they didn't even have clans available. Mm-hmm. You just had to make your uh, your headquarters, your base, and then fight somebody else in the world who had another base. Uh, and there, the clan just gave you defense, basically. Yeah. Um, and so at that time, I was just like, eh, you know, whatever. I can upgrade the the tower. I'll upgrade, you know, the spell factory, whatever, whatever. And it wasn't till. Uh, a customer of mine who I sold a phone to said, hey, come be a part of my clan. I thought, okay. And all of a sudden, people are talking about this, that, and the other, and they're strategizing. Okay, what kind of troops are you going to put down? Do they have like a chat window? Yeah. Okay. They got a chat window, so everyone types in, you, whatever, you whatever. You can IM each other. And, yeah. Okay. And then it makes it a lot more fun because you have this you know, community involvement. Sure. And yeah. anybody in the world can be part of your clan. And so that was a lot more fun. And I thought, okay, I want to upgrade. I want to use... Uh, all my my loot for this, that, and the other to help sure. the clan out. Yeah. So that's what really got me involved in it. And the same kind of thing was with Clash Royale um, because the, all my friends at the time were, were playing this where I was working, and sometimes we would just take our break and talk about the, uh, the, the deck that we had and... Oh, where we would share a replay of what happened, mm-hmm. and, you know, and it's it it was very fun for yeah. these little you know short windows in your day. I mean, I don't want to play for eons, you yeah. know. I mean, good yeah. grief. But um, that's cool. I play that on the regular. Yes, he does. I can I can attest to that. Well, shall we segue into gaming news, Steve? Sure, Russ. Okay. <clears throat> don't worry. We'll probably be uh, talking about our gaming adventures on every episode of this wonderful brand new infant show known as Joygasm. Joygasm! Uh, so let's see here. You, you've seen the trailers of Injustice 2, right? Um, Did, were you sitting with me when we were looking at some of it? I believe, yeah, I believe I, I, yeah, I just, I'm not too big on the whole Injustice yeah, thing. Yeah, well, so. you're not, you're not a huge uh, fighting yeah. game <laughs> yeah, no, fan. I, I can't do I that. am. I, I'm, that's kind of more my bag. Right. Um, this is, Injustice 2 is a game that I'm actually really excited about. It. It's uh, being helmed by Ed Boon, who, um, you, as you know, uh, was working over at Midway and they've turned into NetherRealm Studios and uh, the other Mortal Kombat right. creators, that sort of thing. So they've, they've scored the, the DC license and they've been doing this thing where they've been kind of kind of slowly releasing which characters are going to be in the game. And uh, the Joker was actually just kind of teased yesterday. And uh, that was actually pretty cool. I, I was not expecting that to happen. I, I, for some reason, thought that they would be kind of focusing mainly on more of the, the superheroes kind of turning on each other. Uh, but they're actually bringing forth quite a few of the, of the villains as well in this one. So... I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, they actually have, I think they're going to have something like 19 playable characters, something like that. I mean, the, the roster is actually pretty large. Um, anyway, looking forward to, to playing that game. 
Um, going back to Overwatch, actually, there was some news. I'm not sure if you saw or not, but Overwatch announced that they have officially passed 30 million players playing the game. That's that's okay. Yeah, that's not bad. It's a uh, it's you know it's, it's worth uh, you know kind of giving a fleeting thought to. Mm. Uh, and no. you'll be happy to know that Blizzard is working on three new maps. I heard the they're game. working on maps, and I heard they're working on another character. Oh, another character. I, I didn't. I it's it's all rumored right now, so I don't want to talk about rumors and yeah, what could be yeah. whatever whatever. Well, but I, mean, yeah. I know they were working on maps. Actually, the other night when I was telling you about the three versus three elimination, three versus three. yeah, yep. I was at a different map. All together? All together was a different map. It was small. It was very, very small. But it was Antarctica. That's been there for a while. Well, I didn't know that, Russ. <laughs> I didn't know that because I didn't know. I, that, that, that's only where I yeah, saw you, it first. you haven't been playing that mode until just recently. But yeah, that, that's been there. But no, I mean, like, they have, they have three new maps that, that they're going to be releasing because um, they, being the... the awesome company that they are have been listening to the fans and one of the the gripes that we've all been saying is kind of like well we need more maps we need more variety but they're also doing three more um i guess non-standard maps and i'm not even sure what that really means but it's you know if they end up putting that in then maybe we'll have six i don't know hmm. um welcome back to gibraltar i just <laughs> attacked and defended gibraltar no, <laughs> I was just here. I never left. <laughs> Love you, Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I thought I thought that was worth mentioning because I didn't know if you uh, if you had seen that or not. Yeah. Thirty million players is, I thought, but I was like, well, way to go. I knew that it would be pretty high, but I didn't know it was that high. Um, also, going into Halo, mm. the world of Halo. <clears throat> For those listening, um, I'm currently playing through Halo 5, which, once again, just due to uh, my dad duties, uh, was a game that I had to kind of put on the back burner. But um, I uh, I can tell you, as I'm going through the, the single-player story of, of that particular game, being a late bloomer and all, um, definitely am not thrilled with the lock... Uh, being the the main storyline of the game. I mean, I think Master Chief is probably only going to be in the game maybe 20 or 30% of the time. And most folks probably already know this because this game has been out for a while. But me being just into to it, I was like, man, I, I'm i all about Master Chief. I think you are too. I mean, just everybody is right. just, you know, absolutely <clears throat> wanting to, you know, play the, the, the game as Master Chief and explore the canon of what's going to be talked about in the future of the, where the story goes. Apparently, 343 Industries has been listening to the fans because they have gone on record as saying that um, Halo 6, the focus of the story will be on Master Chief. Huh. Master Chief is back, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's good to hear because, um, as you know, I, I once 343 started doing Halo, um, I bought the Master Chief collection, which I... Thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, um, that was a popular one. I really enjoyed. I mean, it's it's all the re- the Halo games that I grew up with and dearly loved. Uh, re re mixed, re uh, re detailed. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they is, they had the whole cool thing where you could play the original game right right unaltered, and right. then you in real time you can just you know swing right. it over to like more updated level graphics, all that fun stuff. So I thought that was fantastic, and they did a phenomenal Oops. job. Um, but when Halo 4 came out, I just, I wasn't into it. I, I know you were. Which one? Halo 4. Halo 4. I loved Halo 4. I did, I really just, I grinded through it and because I really wanted to beat it and and finish it and see where it went. But, and, and the graphically it did improve. I just, it didn't, it didn't have that X factor for me. It didn't have that life and the atmosphere that I had memorized from the Halo trilogy and Reach. Um... So I couldn't get behind it. So when Halo Five came out, um, I mean, I'm glad they're listening because Halo, the Halo Four and Halo Five are basically developed by Halo fans, just working for a different company, and they want to put on their own little yeah. pitch and design on it. So yeah. I get it where they're coming from, and I'm glad they're listening because that's, I mean, people who are giving you money, you kind of want to listen to them to see how they're going to give you more money. Sure, sure. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> little little stuffy. But yeah, the um, two employees, O'Connor and Wolfkill, acknowledged this in a recent interview. Um, I think it was with Games TM Magazine or something like that. Um, in fact, I think yeah. Here's a, here's a blurb here. It says we were very much. Oh, we very much realized that people wanted Master Chief's story of Halo 5, said O'Connor. We definitely marketed it, it in a way that and hoped it was going to uh, bring a surprise, but for some fans, and certainly fans of Master Chief, it was a huge disappointment because they wanted more Chief. And I think that, you know, yeah. that's basically in a yeah. nutshell. No, that's not what in a nutshell. This is what's in a nutshell. Hello, hello, I'm in a nutshell. Oh, How did I get in this thing? <laughs> well... I think it was kind of ballsy in a way to actually have <laughs> both <laughs> have Locke be more of a pre- prevalent uh, character in the game because um, ODST Halo ODST only certain people would play it and actually and a portion of them would only like the game. And that's it wasn't, true. It wasn't even that big of a success, and that's where Locke really was. I remember that you and uh, another friend of ours um, actually really did enjoy, you appreciated the qualities of ODST, mm-hmm. but I never got into ODST because it wasn't Master Chief. That right. Was, so, yeah, that's, yeah. It was this whole that's different viewpoint on Halo without the Master Chief. And so to, to reintroduce Locke in that team and take away Master Chief, that's kind of a ballsy move. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Balls. Balls. So, anyway, sorry, you go. I was going to say that. Um, well, I think even with, with, uh, with Halo 6, with them saying that, there's a chance that at this year's E3 that maybe they'll, they'll tease something, you know, some gameplay footage or something like that. But I'm sure that there will be talks about um, what Halo 6 will, will bring to the table, so to speak. And so I'm, I'm excited because I think that... They've had a chance, you know, 343 had a, has had a chance to get their feet wet since Bungie handed the reins over uh, just of the, the Halo IP. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they, I think they've had uh, some successes with it, but I think other things too, like, like I think they need to get back to basics of, of what makes Halo Halo. And so it sounds encouraging anyway that they're going to be um, taking that a bit more front and center. I think they have to also because Halo... There's an entire generation of players who haven't really got into Halo. I mean, we're in our 30s, and we've yeah. grown up with Halo before, and lugging around TVs, to oh, other people's the houses. the huge brick and X- that was the original yeah. Xbox. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you had to get your own, you bring your own controllers and your system and your TV and your game. I mean, yeah, it was, I mean. Can't forget the Ethernet cable. And the Ethernet cables. <laughs> I mean, that was great fun. But anyway. There's a, whole gener- there's a whole generation that hasn't played in that manner before. And so uh, if they hadn't gone back in the time to play it, they don't really know what Halo is all about and how much fun and how much of a success it was. Yeah. Um, so Halo, in, in, a, in a way, is rather old. And it's it they need to reinvigorate the franchise again to make it popular. Because right now, I don't even know if I'd go back to Halo because I'm playing Overwatch. And I love Overwatch so much that, you know, since Halo 4 was you know, so-so with me... Mm-hmm. I don't really have an interest in going back to play it. I'd rather play Overwatch because I'm having much better time with that. So that that's what they have to compete with. I mean, yeah. how many thirty million people playing Overwatch? You Over said? thirty million. So yeah. uh, I don't know how many people are playing Halo, but I don't think it's thirty million. Maybe I'm wrong. I would have to check the numbers on that. I'm not sure what the numbers are for Halo is, but I mean, typically in the past, the Halo numbers are nothing to sneeze at either. I mean, you have a very loyal, very dedicated, rabid fan base of Halo. And I think, um, well, even with Halo 5, for instance, um, even though the the story was kind of ho-hum and and kind of chastised for for not really having much of uh, Spartan 117, um, the multiplayer, however, has been praised by pretty much everybody universally across the board. I mean, everybody has said that that the gameplay mechanics have been impl- implemented into it. And again, I apologize. I'm uh, getting caught back up. I used to be just on the bleeding edge of all this stuff and cusp. The, the cusp. <laughs> um... So, yeah, I mean, and once the story thing is over with, if I have time, I would like to check that out just because I've heard nothing but great stuff about that. So um, some other news in E3, too, is um, and this has been kind of a growing trend, really. Nintendo has announced that uh, um, they are not going to host a large 
E3 press conference at, mm. e, at E3. Now, I know in the past, I think at least last year, maybe in the last couple of years, um, I'll have to double check on that, but um, they have slowly been kind of moving away from the E3 area and kind of having their own day to, to be able to demonstrate their their stuff and, and be able to um, talk about all things Nintendo. And actually, Microsoft is doing something that's kind of similar this year, too, where typically Microsoft's um, press conferences would take place on Monday. It was kind of like that, the big day that when E3 got kicked off and they were kind of the first up to bat, so to speak. Apparently, this year, they are going to do it on a Sunday. They're actually going to like, and it's not going to be an E3. They're going to have it like somewhere else. It's almost, it's, it's almost like what Apple does in a way mm. whenever they have oh, their, right. their you know, conference. Their, yeah. yeah their, their September conference. Um, so that, that's pretty interesting. I, I think I could see how it could be a shrewd move just because you don't have to deal with as much distractions. You know, E3, it's just such a tour de force of, all these gaming announcements and everyone vying for media's attention and everything else. And so it does make sense. Um, so I'm curious to see how, that, how that's going to play out. And what's nice too is, of course, is that you can always watch their, their press conference on Xbox One. You know, like they have through Xbox Live the ability to be able to show that. And they've, they've been doing that for the last few years on there. Which is great because oftentimes when it's going on, I'm, I'm at work or you're at work. You know, you, you, don't have, you can't exactly like right. tell your boss to, you know, Hold on a second. Let me. Uh, I got this important press conference. You got to check <laughs> out here. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's definitely something that that's going to be interesting to see how Nintendo fares and how uh, Microsoft fares. Um, in terms of Sony, I have not heard of what they plan on doing. It they may just kind of do business as usual at E3. I'm not sure, but um, I have heard that Sony talked about how they have shipped over 60 million units um, of their system, which is worth noting. I mean, that's, yeah, I don't think it's as high as the numbers that they sold of like previous consoles, but it's still something uh, that's, you know, pretty impressive considering that they, I think they came out in 2013. Mm, yeah. 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 That's impressive. Uh, that's, that's, that's most impressive. That's, uh, that's uh, money to be made. There's lots of, Money, 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 money. Give me some money, honey. Uh, game that I'm looking forward to at E3. Hopefully they'll show it. Is um, the new uh, Call of Duty, World War Two, World War Two, W W Dose, W W Dose. Now, I uh, I've only played one Call of Duty, which I think was Black Ops Two, um, and I think the franchise needs to do something where um, it, again reinvigorates or does something different than they've done before because they've gone into the future and they've done zombies and you kind of play one Call of Duty and you kind of sort of play all the Call of Duties in a way and everybody knows it um, but uh, to go back in time to, to World War II um, it, I think it's going to be a successful move because mm -hmm. I mean it, well they're kind of following Battlefield One, Battlefield in that, in that One, regard, which is great because right. you have all that brand new hardware yeah. pushing all that, that tech and stuff. Yeah, and it's absolutely. Good. Yeah. yeah, and you have a new audience who yeah. hasn't played like where Medal of Honor, like for example, yeah. you started out. I mean, when mm -hmm. I played that, was a fantastic game. Yeah, you know that brings up a point though. What bro? What point okay, so does it bring up, Steve? I've been thinking about this for a long, long time. We're getting off top. We're getting off the news, but I just have to say because it's on the tip of my tongue. Well, we'll make it quick. What they, what these game companies might want to consider, consider is is remaking a lot of the successful games with next gen hardware and software. Because the, I mean, you, if you have a successful game and it was back in the sixteen bit era, mm -hmm. I know I'm not really talking Sonic the Hedgehog, really. Yeah. But a lot of games that were that were fun to play and people had a great time with, uh, and a fond memories of. If you reintroduce those games with, um maybe a new level design or just all the different textures and the graphics and the sounds and everything like that. I mean, who wouldn't play that game all over again? You heard that they're redoing Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, they're re correct. And I'm, 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 
I'm buying it and I'm playing it for yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. I have over, I don't even know how many much time I, over 99 hours in that game. Yeah. So for sure I'm going to buy oh, it. Oh, you probably have more than that. Oh, I'm, I have, that's where the timer stopped counting. Yeah. And so I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I have probably double that. Steve is like the, the Final Fantasy fan over here. Like, I've watched him on the couch just play that game for, you know, it'd be, I wish there was a way that you could log like just watching hours, like in yeah. addition to playing hours, because right. I have <laughs> sat there watching you battle. Like I remember, like those those what were they? I don't even Ult- know what they're like called, ultimates or something like that, or ultimas or like there was one that lasted like five minutes. Like you, I had to like go like get something oh. to eat. Like I mean, I'd make myself like a turkey sandwich and I'd come back and it was still going on. Are you talking about like the spells? Y- yeah, like, like you, the you, summons. The summons. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like Knights of the Round. He, oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took right. freaking ever. I'm yeah. just like, what? But it, but it was so cool to watch every time. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh, this is great. I'm yeah, like, hundredth time. And then like the only way to beat some of these secret bosses, you didn't even have to beat them, but the only way you could do it was to cast like reflect on yourself, and you have to do that same exact spell yeah. like thirteen times in a row. They just sit through like an hour of just this one sp- this one summon. Yeah, yeah. All right, back on track here. Right. The last thing that's worth noting, mm. and I think I mentioned this to you already, is that no, yeah, a right. classic. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> in that case, <laughs> um, a classic Sega CD game, Night Trap. Uh, Have I told you about yeah, this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you did tell me about that one. Night Trap 25th Anniversary Edition has been announced for the Sony PS4, and that. It's so funny to watch nostalgia. because, yeah, it's total nostalgia. It's one of the 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 Keystone, not Pipeline, mm-hmm. but Keystone <laughs> games. <laughs> Cornerstone's probably a better word to use. Cornerstone <laughs> game. <laughs> um, Dakota. That that really started the whole ratings for video games. Exactly. I mean, it was basically Night Trap and Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat that really got the right. thing started where, like, all of a sudden they had this congressional, congressional hearing. yep. Hillary Clinton up there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And um, it was uh, it was interesting to play because I remember not thinking it was that bad. I, I mean, I, I was um, just... It was. It was. I, I was immersed in it because right. of a full motion video, right. which was so funny because like right. it was like this grainy. Yeah. It didn't even take up the full screen. Right. It was like this little square on the screen, a full motion video, um, and even the video footage was outdated even back then. Like the game came out back in 1992. Right. Hence the. Tw- I mean, that's been 25 years. Mm-hmm. That just blows me away. I was in like seventh grade. Yeah. Um, and I remember maybe it was even sixth grade when it came out. I don't remember which month it came out, but um. I remember even for that time, just looking at the footage, I was like, this looks kind of old. Like, it looks like it was done kind of like in the late 80s or something. Yeah. Anyway, um, just watching the the trailer for it uh, just brought back that, that nostalgia. I don't know if I would necessarily play through it again, but it was definitely grin-inducing. Just, looking, just watching it and thinking back to, like, that was back when we had that, that I think it was called a plot printer. But it was the one that had the holes on the sides, and it made that really obnoxious, like, Oh, that's... <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember I was so frustrated at one point, because I could not figure out, like, where the, like, like the little vampire... Little... Augers. They were augers, that's, that's right! right. called Augers. Oh, snap! That's, augers. That, that, that's a game that... You watched me play Final Fantasy when that was out. I, I never played Night Trap. Yeah. I always watched you play Night Trap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The augers. Oh my gosh, I haven't heard that in well, twenty five years. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember getting so frustrated because um I just I could not ever figure out like where they would come in and like you know it, the game didn't have a save feature. It wasn't right. like you could just oh I'm going to save the game here right. and then do, do trial and error. No, like right. you had to play the game right. from beginning to end right. in one sitting. Right. So I remember, like, I think I was getting on to, uh, like, Prodigy. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, Prod- yeah because that, that, was that was our dial-up. That, back in the day, that was our internet connection called Prodigy. It was a dial-up system that was really, really slow. No, come on, please connect this time. Yeah, really. So I actually went on to some, like, forum. <laughs> Hang up the phone! I'm trying to get on the internet! <laughs> Man. Good grief. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, 
And uh, I found someone taking the time to actually list every single place at the correct time where you're supposed to, to capture the augers. And so I printed this thing. I had, yeah. I mean, you have to understand, like reams. for all you millennials out there, this was not some like amazing printer that, that you guys have today. Like it was just this, this black and white only thing that you had to like, when it was done printing, you actually had to like, remember it had those, yeah. those, the, uh, the hole punches, s- serrated, was, uh, uh, serrated, uh, serrated, serrated edges on the sides. Is that what it is? Like anyway, I, you had to peel whatever. off the yeah. sides where the hole, uh, the holes yeah. actually were, were part of the spool that kept the paper right. in place. Right. You had to peel those off the sides. So I remember like, I would have like a slumber party over like, um, uh, we'd have, I'd have a friend from like school come right. over and watch it. Right. And there was one time where I actually went through the entire game and nailed using that. I actually had you or even my friend like 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 be like on point right. to tell me like where these things were going on, what was happening with it, that sort of thing. And 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 I actually was able to get like the the secret ending, like like the the perfect ending, so, right. so to speak, as opposed to right. the, the ending where it was that you know you missed somebody or Cause, whatever. Because the game required you to to. It was basically there was cameras set up in the house yeah. with with booby traps right. that you were supposed to. Those booby traps these. were so corny. I know too. it was so corny, but you didn't know. Nothing really told you of where to go, which camera to switch to to capture the auger or you know kill the auger or whatever. Right, whatever. So right. that's what you had to print out. Okay, right after you you capture this one, wait three seconds and then go to this one. Right. You know, and then yeah, yeah. Good times, great oldies. Man. So, um, well, yeah, I think, um, this has been a great first episode. I'm super excited to just do this just so everyone knows. And I can't remember if we said this early on or not, but um, if not, I'll just repeat, repeat myself, but, uh, we are going to be planning on having the, this podcast go on five days a week, Monday through Friday. Um, so we are going to hopefully be able to, to get through kind of the, the barriers to entry when it comes to like iTunes and on Google play, we're going to have that on there. We're probably going to also upload these onto YouTube just for convenience. If uh, you guys are having trouble finding us on iTunes or Google play, but um, yeah, just want to thank you guys for, for tuning in and we hope that uh, you guys will come back tomorrow and the next day and the next day after that. And, and uh, we look forward to being able to entertain you guys as uh you go on about your daily business, so good times. Good times indeed. I mean, I'm pumped. Are you pumped? I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I'm, I'm, I'm freaking pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah, this is good. This is really good. So yeah, until next time, uh, I guess we'll bid you adieu and happy gaming. <laughs>